Welcome, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at this EYOYO 7 inch touch display for Raspberry Pi. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So the resolution is 1024 by 600. This is an IPS display. It's compatible with Raspberry Pi 5, 4, 3, 2, and 0. You can also use it with other devices via HDMI. So let's get this open. Here we have the user manual. There's a note here and it says this does not have built-in speakers for sound output. Connect external speakers via the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Here are the device connection guidelines. So to make this compatible, you want to put your SD card into a computer and enter these parameters in the config.txt file. Then you'll save those and it will make it all work. This talks about setting it up on a PC, your contact information, some notes here. This shows the different parts. We have the display, we have brackets, HDMI cable, USB-A to USB-C cable, mini HDMI adapter, some screws, some standoffs, screwdriver and a manual. So here we have the specs. You can pause and read through those. We've gone over some of these. It has five point touch, has HDMI and type C interfaces, powers five volts. Here we have the back. So this has some tactile buttons for menus. We have HDMI input, has on-screen display for adjusting it for a picture and such. This talks about attaching the feet to the bottom. We have some troubleshooting. Looks like that's about it. Here we have the accessories. We have the HDMI cable, the USB cable, and the adapters. Looks like it also comes with a small screwdriver. Here's the board itself. Let's see if there's anything else. Looks like that's it. I'll pull this out. So here's the panel. Get some rough measurements here. So that's just a hair under six and a half, and this is a hair under four. Now don't take these as engineering measurements, I'm just doing rough measurements. Looks like it's maybe a little bit over a half inch thick. So it has feet here that will go on the bottom. Let me get those attached. And there's kind of a tape covering these screw holes. So I'll kind of pop those off. Try a razor knife here. So I'll get these little black screws out of here. And these are going to have a covering on the sides. I'll peel this off. We have that black finish. So this long screw is going to go through here. You can see it come out the other side and that's going to screw into the standoff here. So now we can stand this up like so. So this can get you started, but you could also create your own enclosure. You could 3D print an enclosure or build one out of wood or metal or some other kind of thing. But I do like that it comes with feet if you're not going to choose some other option. So I'm going to be hooking up a Raspberry Pi 5 to this. And we have that here, so that will go on there like so. So again, I'm going to remove the plastic from these standoffs. So I can line this up here. Now when I do that, you can see it's hitting the HDMI port. So it comes with these standoffs here that thread in to raise it up. So I'll get those installed, and there's four of those. So you can hand tighten these. I have a four millimeter screwdriver here. You don't want to over tighten these and break the board. So now this will fit on there and stand off the board. And it comes with screws to screw into those standoffs. Okay, so we have the Pi mounted. Now we can plug things in. So we have HDMI cable. We have the adapter. So this is going to plug in here. Don't have a lot of room there. So I'm going to plug into the HDMI here, under here. And then we have power. So I'll plug the USB-C in here. And now you could plug this into another power source or you could plug it into the Raspberry Pi itself. So I'll plug it into the Raspberry Pi. I need to remember to take the card out here. I probably should have done this before. And I'll do those config changes to this. And then the HDMI will plug in here. But this is a tight fit. So it might help to get a specialty cable with maybe a mini HDMI to HDMI and have that mini HDMI at an angle or something, because that's sticking out the bottom. Okay, so I got the card updated. I'll put it back in and I'll plug the Raspberry Pi in with its power supply. There we go. So this should boot up, I think. Let me peel this plastic off. 
Oh, there we go. Welcome to my desktop. So I don't have a keyboard hooked up. I'll get that done. Well, I won't need a keyboard because it's a touch screen. So I'll open up a web browser here. I'll just tap on it. Now, it may take a second to open here, but. So we have a browser open up. Now, if I want to type here, there's a keyboard. If I tap the right side and we have a keyboard, it's pretty small here. I don't know if that can be bigger or not. There might be other keyboards you can install too, but we could type in a URL there. But it works like a regular touchpad. Now this isn't going to have auto rotate and things like that. So the display size on this is 1024 by 600, which is a little bit less than 720p, but it looks very nice and fits the screen size very well, I think. So I'm gonna get some sort of use case set up for this and then I'll come back and demonstrate it. Okay, so I did a little bit of customization here. I dug through my cable drawers. So my power cable for my Raspberry Pi is straight, but I got a little right angle adapter here. You can also get power supplies with right angle adapters. And here I have a right angle micro HDMI to HDMI cable, and I got a really short USB-A to USB-C cable to plug this in. So that gives it a little bit more compact setup. So they give you cables to get this going, but you can use your own cables, and especially if you have an enclosure that you build around this, you might want different configurations. Also have a keyboard mouse dongle in there. So I'll plug this in and turn it on. So here I've loaded up Home Assistant in kiosk mode on the Chromium browser. So it's not hard to do, you can do research on Chromium browser kiosk mode and you can get instructions on how to do that. But here I can scroll down on the right side. Then if I want to turn on a light, I can just tap it and we'll turn the light on or off. I can actually tap the name here and that will bring up the larger screen. And this is a dimmer. So I can actually set it to a certain brightness. So with a screen like this, you could build an enclosure and embed this in a wall and have a whole control panel system with Home Assistant or maybe some other software that would run on here. Now here I have an offline version of Wikipedia. So I can use that. And I can scroll here. I can tap links. And I can view different articles. Now, I don't know how to get a keyboard up here. If I tap in here, it doesn't bring a keyboard up. There might be a way to swipe or do that with the kiosk mode. I'm not really sure. But these are just a few examples of things you can do with a touchscreen like this. Of course, you can use this like a regular monitor so I can open up applications like the calculator. Now, I can use my mouse here or I can actually type with my fingers. And this is really no different from using the Raspberry Pi in a regular desktop monitor, except we do have the smaller resolution of 1024 by 600. So this also works with Windows and Linux PCs. So here I have a little mini PC back here. It's running Windows 11. I have it showing up here. I have a web page up here. We can scroll up and down. I can pinch and zoom. And I could use it similar to how I might use a laptop with a touch screen. Now it has the little buttons on the side, the little tactile buttons. So if I press the top one, we can go into the menu. Oops, let's do that again. And I can go through the settings here. Let me zoom in on that. So we have picture settings. So if we wanna change the backlight, we can do that here. So we can turn that up quite a bit if we want. I think I had it at around 30. Keep it right around there. We have brightness, contrast, sharpness. We have color, advanced, audio, and other. Now to hook it up to a PC, I just plugged in the HDMI and the USB. So the USB is supplying power and it's also enabling the touch screen. Now I still have the Raspberry Pi 3 here. It's just not hooked up. So I could take this off and just use it with Windows. I left it there if I wanted to hook it back up later. So that's the EOYO 7 inch touchscreen for Raspberry Pi. A screen like this can be used on its own, just as a monitor, or you could incorporate it in a project. It's easy to connect to a Raspberry Pi. You just hook up the USB and the HDMI and it's powered by the Pi itself. Now this does come with legs, so you can use it on its own, but you don't have to have those and it has some little threaded standoffs. So if you want to incorporate this into a project, you can do that. So this could be good for things like Home Assistant, or maybe you're setting up a monitoring screen in a RV or camper. 
And with the multi-point touch, you can just use a touch interface with this. You don't have to hook a keyboard and mouse up if whatever you're using it for will work with just touch. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.